All right. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, what I want to do is I want to graph y equals 2 cotangent of x plus pi halves. Now, when we are graphing sine and cotine um, and their reciprocal identities, there is, remember, kind of some information that we figured out for every single type of problem. So when you guys are doing your homework and when you're doing your test, it's very important that you find out exactly the same amount of information. So if you guys remember, we looked at what was the period, what was the amplitude, what was the x scale, and what was the start and the end. If you guys have watched any of my videos, you've noticed, or actually you've seen in class as well, that I've done this exact same thing for every single problem I graph, right? You don't see my graphs, just nice little squiggly lines, and then I try to, and then I tell you what the marks are. I do my work, and this is the way I expect to also look at your homework and say, oh, okay, here's the work that they've provided for each one of their um, problems. They just don't have the graph up there. So let's go and figure out again, remember, first of all, what amplitude was. Amplitude, remember, was half distance between the maximum and the minimum. Well, when looking at the parent graphs, cotangent and tangents don't have a maximum and a minimum point. So therefore, our amplitude in this case is not going to exist. We are not going to have an amplitude for a cotangent and tangent. All right? I'll say it again. Tangent cotangent are not going to have an amplitude. All right. So our period. If you guys remember before, for sine, cosine, cosecant, and secant, we always did 2 pi divided by Jacob. B as in butterfly. Very good. However, now our period is not going to be 2 pi divided by B. It's going to be pi divided by b. So you are going to have to make sure you understand that distinction. For tangent and cotangent, it's pi divided by b. And therefore, pi divided by b, in this case, our b is 1. So our period is pi divided by 1, which is pi. All right? Now, previously, we've always then remember to find the x scale. You could take pi divided by 4. And you still can do that. And there's actually a really good reason why you'd want to do it divided by 4. Um, however, I'm not going to teach you guys it that way. I just want to teach you a little bit kind of a short, shorter way. We're not going to get into the full graph. So what I'd like you guys to do is take your x scale and just divide it by 2 rather than 4. So I'd just say pi divided by 2, which in this case is just pi divided by 2. OK. So here's where cotangent and tangent also are going to defer. Remember the start? What we did is we took whatever is inside of our function and we set it equal to 0. For the cotangent function, you're going to do that exact same thing. It's going to be 0, I'm sorry, it's going to be x plus pi halves equals 0. And then the end, rather than setting whatever's inside your function equal to 2 pi, we're just going to set it equal to pi. So that's going to be your start and your end. Then once you have your start and your end, we need to now solve for x. So therefore, x is going to equal negative pi halves. And this one, um, x plus pi, OK. And then this one, we're actually going to have x equals pi halves. Benjamin, yes. Go around that way. That way, that way, that way. It's OK. OK, so um, now we have our start and our end. So ladies and gentlemen, to graph this, you're going to make your nice little x-intercept, or your x-axis. Your then we click the point where it's going to start. Negative pi halves. All right, that's your start. And then our x scale is pi halves. So that means negative pi halves plus pi halves is going to take me to 0. Then I have pi halves. Pi halves plus pi halves is going to give me a pi, right? Pi plus pi halves is 3 pi over 2. And you can also go in the negative direction, right? OK. Well, let's just start at where our start point. So our start point's at negative pi halves. We know at x equals 0, we know that that's our y axis, right? So we can always draw our y axis. Um, now, here's where the thing, here's where cotangent and tangent kind of defer. If you guys remember, remember when we found secant and cosecant? We had to find the x-intercepts of sine and cosine, and that's where our asymptotes were at. 
for the cotangent and tangent, our start and our end are also going to be where our asymptotes are. So at negative pi halves, I'm going to create an asymptote. And at pi halves, I'm going to create an asymptote. Okay. Then, but it said our x scale is pi halves. That means there's an important point right here. That means that's our critical point. So what is that? Well, that critical point is actually going to be our x-intercept. Yes? I thought your critical point was pi over 2. Remember, yes, your critical point is pi over 2 or your x scale. Remember, all we were dealing about when I said your critical points, that's just the distance between the critical points. So the distance between the critical points or our critical or our scale is pi halves. So from here to here is pi halves. From here to here is pi halves. The start and the end are at negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. Okay, so I sometimes call the critical points like our x scale, the distance between your critical points, which is pi halves. So from here to here is pi halves, and from here to here is pi halves. Now, the reason why it might be helpful um, to look at this is a lot of times, ladies and gentlemen, it's important to sometimes we'll teach it by doing the x scale of pi over 4 because it's helpful to sometimes know what those two other points are. Because what that's going to do is that's going to tell you how to graph it by using dilation. Because what does that 2 do? Our 2 is supposed to be like our amplitude, right? But we don't have an amplitude. So what is that 2 going to do? How is that 2 going to affect our graph? Well, if you guys remember, how does the 2 affect this graph? Does it remember? No. You remember how that affects that graph? It's something about the absolute value of it, of your graph. When it is greater than 1, it makes your graph skinnier. And when it's less than 1, it's going to make it, what we say, sometimes fatter or expand it horizontally. Well, that, that too is going to have the same effect. Now, how much of an effect? Well, what you could do is you could always find these values and then plug them into your function to find the output value. I, however, just want you guys just to notice what this graph, you know that that 2 is going to actually horizontally compress your, um, compress your function. So we're going to look at cotangent. The main important thing about cotangent is now it rises to the left and then falls to the right. Then we go a set and I can continue as that's going to be my next intercept. Next growth point. And all I'm going to ask you guys to do is graph two periods. I'll graph three of them. But that's what your function is. And I'm trying to just, I'm not doing a very exact method of the graphing. You could plug in you know, negative pi force and pi force, plug them into your function, and find out exactly where they are. But I, I'm not going to ask that for you guys. Just make sure you try to represent them um, skinnier than your, or compressed compared to your parent function. OK? And that's how you graph the cotangent function. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. All bought on.